mentions. I just got to make sure everybody's in here. Okay. Yes. Lasia, did you have a question? Lasia? No? Okay. There's something like, all right. So let's sketch this out. Um, let's make it a horseshoe. So you can almost think I'm right to do the shape. I think of rainbows. So you can kind of think of a rainbow. I guess it's got somewhat steeper sides. Like it's not totally curved. It's got kind of straighter sides. Then I'll have a bottom on one side, a bottom on the other. And then how, however long you make these, these internal lines, um, that's how big, that's how thick the um, magnet will be. Uh, Patrick, did you have a question? If anybody has a question, they can just like talk. This class, this class um, was, was really big. And then a couple kids moved to um, Wednesday. Um, so it's not quite as big. Looking good, looking good. Um, all right. And then we want to add a little bit of thickness to this. So it's almost like you're making bubble letters, you're making 3D letters, you make letters the same way. So I'm gonna make the angle of the bottom of the magnet. It's gonna make it, you know, two angles come down and then I'll come straight across. I'll do that at the, the other side too. Now I'm actually adding an extra line because it's easier for me to see that this is the bottom. And then this is kind of, the, this, it's not the hard part, it's the fun part. You come up the side of the magnet and then it's gonna kind of like, as the magnet turns, it kind of disappears behind itself. You see that? Does that make sense? And then the same thing happens this way. So the side will come up this way because it's the thickness of that side. And then it disappears under itself on that side. Um, this art, this is, these are the hidden pictures. So they didn't really do any tone, but sometimes a lot of times the side of things um, are turned away from the light source. So you could add a little bit of shadow to the side. And then that'll make it look even more uh, three-dimensional. One side, the, the, the front side will be light and then the, the sides of it and the bottoms of it will be dark. And that's the most obvious thing is when, you know, the, the, the bottom of things are dark. And that's only because the sun is usually above us. And then same with the lights, you know, the lights in this room, I've got these um, incandescent light bulbs. They're from up above. And so even though this drawing, the reference doesn't have a shadow, just by me shading the bottoms, makes it feel, um, you know, a little like 3D, like you can like pick it up kind of. Um, this is the, um, this is represents the paint. So I, I should look up like a magnet so you guys can see it. Um, let me see if I can find that. But we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that in a second. How did everybody do on this one? It was, it was good, right? I haven't finished it yet. Okay. Well, as you guys are finishing that, I will look up like gen a generic magnet. When everybody says something's generic, um, it means that it's like very regular. There's nothing special about it. It's just, and this is a very generic magnet. It's like they've made magnets like this for, you know, a hundred years. Wait till you see how my magnet's gonna look. Um, I, I learned a new word this week. Here's the, here's the generic, here's a generic magnet. They actually did it three dimensional too. So I guess the, the loop part, the curve part is red and then the tip uh, is white. I wasn't sure of that. Here's I'm, just making a, I'm just making a generic magnet. Cool. I'm gonna make some a some, rainbow Some one. of them are even curved even more. Look at that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna let Eric in here. Um, so, there's a thing called um, iterate. When you, iterate you do the same thing again, but you improve on it. So if I were to iterate my magnet, I would start with a curve, just like what we did, but I don't know if you saw this one. The one that where the guy is holding it, see how these, the ends feel like they're pinched in? Like the ends are like almost touching on that version. This one is like a perfect U um, and then those are pinched in. So I was just gonna draw one where and not everybody has to do this. I'm just talking about iterating, you know, drawing a nut, the same thing, but kind of hopingly adding to it and, and improving on it. So there's the bottom of that. And then do you see how one of, one of them came too thin? This side was thicker than that side. I mean, it's okay. This is just a warm up. It's just a sketch. But then I'm gonna add my shadows. And I should actually add those colors now that I figured out what is the right color. We'll do one end red. And then this is the thing. I don't know. 
everybody like people that have been to science class if they see this you know the red the red body with the tip um white and the curve everybody knows what a magnet is i mean you guys might not because you may not have had it in science class yet but eventually you'll learn it i'm gonna make a face on mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah make it a, make it a, a character you can make it mr magnet and mrs magnet Mr. Magnet, can I use that name? Yeah, use it. Trust me, use it. Start a whole comic book. You can make a, uh, you can make your own version of a. He is gonna make a little cute face. Now I'm sketching the um, my color pencil mixed with my regular pencil. It's so funny because it looks good on the zoom, like it looks good on the screen. Um, it doesn't always look good when you mix color pencils with graphite. Graphite's kind of a metal. And color pencils are like pigment mixed with wax. So usually you don't want to mix the two. But in this case, it's just a warm up. I said whatever. I like my magnet. Good to see you guys. I'm glad everybody made it this morning. Um, if you have color pencils, the next one when we start the uh, sandwich, something tells me that the bread color and the le and the leaves of the lettuce and maybe if you stack some tomatoes in there or stack some you know turkey or whatever you put in there um, the different colors might be helpful especially the red green and brown okay let's start this sandwich I'm still not done <laughs> let me see how far along do you really have to go I just need like two more minutes <laughs> two more minutes. Like, right. with, okay, about, this is what I have so far. Yeah, it's so good. And you're like expanded on it and you iterated it and everything. We got to keep going. All right, good. I mean, you can always come back to these. You can always come back. Hopefully you guys draw the whole rest of the morning. An hour is not that long. Okay, I'm going to move my sand, move my magnet up here and let's do the sandwich. So if you look at the sandwich, it's kind of the same idea. Instead of it being like a rainbow loop, it's going to be a square that's got a little bit of wiggle to it. So the top of the bread is essentially a square. So when I say square, I mean, it's got a top side, it's got a bottom and it's got a left and it's got a right. Now, a square has sharp edges. A sandwich has curved, has curved corners. So I sketched that lightly in anticipation for, I'm going to round the corner. I'm gonna come in and get a little bit of wiggle. I'm gonna round the corner, come in and then make this side curvy. So you can start with a straight and then always round it out. Um, it looks like the artist was trying to add some kind of thick crust. The bread that I eat, you can see the crust, um, especially on the side. So I'm gonna make the side brown, but I like rye bread and the inside of the rye bread is lighter. So that's what my sandwich was this morning. And rye bread has um, like rye seeds in it. So I'm gonna add a little flakes of the seeds. So again, you can make whatever kind of bread you want. And I think this artist, if I draw over here, I think this artist made, tried to make the bread crust really thick and it just looks, and bread isn't thick, the crust isn't thick like that. It's down the side, like we did with the, uh, you know, with the magnet. So I'm gonna add a couple more flakes. And then, ladies and gentlemen, let's do the lettuce. For some reason, the lettuce is the last thing that people put on. So imagine you go, imagine you get a sandwich, you put bread on the bottom, meat, tomatoes, lettuce, and then bread on top. So if we're going in reverse order, because we're doing the top down, so it goes bread, lettuce, tomatoes, meat, and then another thing of bread. So I'm gonna do my uh, lettuce really wavy. It'll be butter lettuce. I don't know if you've ever had butter lettuce. It's so delicious. And it's a, it's a yellow green, kind of like this. I don't like when it hangs outside the sandwich like that, but for my drawing, it works well. It works really well having it, having the extra lettuce, you know, cause the green looks so good. And everybody, I feel like everybody can notice that it is gonna be lettuce. I'm gonna do a rounded tomato. If I'm moving too fast, be like, Trevor, you're moving too fast. So I'm going to do a tomato on that side. Oh my gosh, the green and the red together. Look at those tomatoes. Should I make it a BLT? Ooh. 
Maybe I'll make it a BLT because that's what I ate for lunch yesterday. <clears throat> so I switched my brown. I'm going to do little squares hanging off the side. And I hope um, I was offended by eating meat. I was a vegetarian and a vegan for a long time, just for health reasons, but I definitely eat meat now. <clears throat> All right, that's my bacon. I'm gonna use little rec squares, which, you know, if you were to imagine if the bacon off of the sandwich, it's gonna be a long wiggly square or rectangle. What am I talking about? A rectangle. So the only part that we see is the part that hangs off. Amazing. Mmm, bacon. I think there's even room to put, should we put more lettuce down? Or should we just go straight bread? Maybe we'll put another layer of lettuce. Sandwich is turning into something very big. All right, now here's my bread. You can see my crust on the bottom. The sandwich is huge. And the lettuce sticks out so far, I don't even think you can see the side of the bread. <laughs> yes, very good. Very, very good. Good thing I'm not hungry. They say don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry because you just buy too much. And I feel like the same thing is for um, don't draw when you're hungry. A, you might mess up, but B, you might just draw food the entire time. Oh. oh my God, my sandwich is fat. <laughs> <laughs> got the nice sweater for one of my students. Okay. <laughs> Nice. I just got a lot of, let's see. Your sandwich man. You made sandwich man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. These are great. Thank you. And there's Miss there's little Miss Magnet. <laughs> Here, should we do another should we try another? Do we do one more warm-up or do you want to switch straight to the shuttle? Warm up. The warm-ups are so fun. I know, they are super fun. You want to try one that's a planet, though? No, thanks. I kind of want to do something, like, funny or something. They're cute. Like a puppy. Um, let me see if I can find a puppy. going to do the Pokemon. Yeah, let's do Pikachu, maybe. Um, so, I did... We had, we had a... We've got Wormy and... Couple others. Um, where's Stacy? She's supposed to help me with the Pokemon characters. You have Pikachu. Um, I do not have. I don't think I have Pikachu. Um, let's do one more warm up, and then I'll go over to Wormy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, oh my this, God. This, yeah, this is actually yeah. a really good one. This one will be a. This will be another um, good dimensional one. No wait. This is Sandwich Girl. She has eyelashes. Trevor. I'll give you guys how about a you just search up a picture of Pikachu. I'll Google it. There's we did we have Evie too. She's in there. Good. Look that one. All right. Where should I put this? I'll move this up here. So everything fits. Okay, this is gonna be the hardest one so far, but it's gonna be a really good one because it's always nice to know uh, how to draw a whistle. Okay, so we have a couple choices with our whistle up here. Um, I'm gonna draw, so have you guys ever blown a whistle before? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you blow a whistle and I don't know exactly how it works, the mechanics of it, but I do know that there's a slot at the top and then usually there's a ball, like a little piece of cork, like a, like a ball that's like on the inside that like moves around. Um, and I don't understand how the war, how the wall, the wind like, you know, swirls through there, but I can tell that this is almost like, you want to almost imagine that this is a swirling chamber. So this is where you put your mouth on it. Of course you need to, you know, sanitize it or whatever before you use a whistle. 
Um, so let's just do the mouthpiece first. I'm going to use a rectangle. And I got to make sure that the rectangle um, has an opening for the, for the uh, air to go through. So I'm going to put another rectangle inside of that. So rectangle inside of a rectangle. Um, you can almost imagine, you can almost imagine that if you sketch in these lines, it almost gives you like the direction of the, of the wind. You know, if you draw those little sections here. So we need the top of the whistle that has the hole and then the side of the whistle, which is the chamber, um, you know, the wind chamber. And have you ever seen a picture of like a cloud like this and it's got lips and it's like blowing wind. There's, it's got like, a, it's got like a face. You ever seen like a cartoon like that? It's like, like a wind, like the wind gusting. Anyway, this is what I'm imagining. This is the wind blowing. Oh. And imagine that the wind runs straight for a little while and then it turns into the circle at the bottom. And this is where the wind, like it's gonna turn around. So that's the side, goes straight. And then it starts to hit this swirling part, which like I said, I think there's a little teeny ball on the inside, but I'm not exactly sure. <clears throat> so we've got, like we had the um, front of the, we had the front of the uh, magnet, the bottom of the magnet, and then the side of the magnet. We're gonna have the um, front mouthpiece, the side of the whistle, and then we have to do the top of the whistle. And it kind of disappears around itself. And then there's a rectangle on the top of that, which is where the, the air is released. So the air goes in, it spirals around in that chamber in there, and then it comes out of that little hole right there. And I think whistles usually have a, um, but they usually have like an attachment on there. So like a string, so you can wear them like around your neck, like you're a coach or a referee. I might make that a, a dark black cord. And yeah, whistles can be like any color. I'm gonna make mine pink. That sounds good. And I think they can be plastic. They can be made out of metal. I'm gonna add a little side accent here. Why does my sandwich have blonde okay. hair? Do you guys see the slice of bread that's underneath here? I can't tell if this is like as good of a slice of that bread or like not as good of a slice of bread. If you guys are going, if you guys are going super fast, some people draw really fast. Um, there's this really great chili pepper that curls into a tip. Wait, I need to get a yellow. <laughs> Got the yellow. Good. <clears throat> I have to make my uh, make my cloud look a little bit more like a cloud. I'm gonna get my picture. My friend Athena gave this to me. Excuse me. I got this for Valentine's Day. And one of my Valentines. Like As a pencil sharpener. Yeah. Love it. That's like the best. That's like the best gift for an artist is a pencil sharpener for Valentine's Day. That was definitely the way to my heart. Um, okay. Let's see. You want to, should we, should we sketch a uh, Pokemon before we go into outer space? Yep. What about we draw Pokemon in outer space? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was saying, can I, we I, draw I, like Eevee or something? Uh, yeah, we can draw Eevee. I, I sketched a really nice Eevee the other day. I was going to do Wormy because it worm the Wormy kind of helps. We, we can do both. I think we'll have time to do both. I didn't realize. Brightness and display. Never. I'll come back to my whistle, man. You made a What's whistle, man? Whistle? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you've got like an entire comic book. Okay. Let's do Wormy first, and then we'll do Eevee. And we can do Evie with flowers because I haven't drawn that one yet. There's one where she's sitting down and has like flowers in her hair and on her tail. Who is Wormy? Um, it's this guy. That guy's name is Weedle. Weedle, sorry, not Wormy. Weedle. 
I know a bunch of the Pokemon's names because I like them a lot. I know some. We had some guys in the last class that really knew their Pokemon like very well, very much. I don't know. I don't know how to sketch them, but I, I, I kept to say like I'm not. I was not like a born a fan of Pokemon. I was just kind of too old. Let's see. All right. Can you guys all see this? I'm going to put my Pokemon on a separate paper. I think that's a good idea. This is my original so far. Okay, that'll be, that might work better. <clears throat> okay. We've got this, y'all. All right, so when you draw any animal, one of the good rules um, to think about is to get the um, get the eyes, nose, and mouth, and ears, like all the characteristics that make up that character, you know, in their face. So when that happens, um, oh, let me move this back. Yes, okay. So when that happens, you kind of get oriented, and then the rest of the drawing is really easy to make. So I think we're going to follow that same, um, you know, that same theory when it comes to um, this Pokemon character. Um, all right, is that stable? That's stable. All right, let's get the head. I'm going to use a circle. Now, don't be fooled. Um, the rest of the body parts of this Weedle they look like they're circles, but imagine if you had a perfect circle like a clay and you squished it a little bit. Um, this guy is, the, these parts are squished a little bit, like each sections of the, of the bug. And he's not a bug, he's a Pokemon, but still, he looks like a bug. Um, all right. Looks so like a worm. Looks like a worm, yeah. Um, what I found was a lot of times I'm not really sure whether to put, what characteristics to put down first. Usually I put down what's in the middle. So if you see this um, nose, the nose is very nicely positioned in the middle. It's at a little angle and it comes outside of the head. So I'm gonna do a sideways oval and I have it come outside of the head a little bit. So already we've got a, just a circle and just an oval. And to me, it almost looks like, a, I mean, it looks like a head with a nose. Um, the eyes, when they look straight at you, um, on like a flat surface, they're going to be round. And that's what this eye is. Now the eye is higher than the nose and it's kind of spaced out to the side a little bit. That's got a circle and then there's a highlight in there. Usually when you're drawing any reflections on eyes, they're circular because it's reflecting the sun. Um, you can look at some fancy paintings, you know, from the Renaissance and if they're painted from someone inside, you can actually see the windows. Sometimes they're square windows. Sometimes they, you can actually see the bars on the windows. So for our purposes, we're gonna, when we see the reflection on this uh, worm, we're gonna imagine that it is the sun that it's reflecting. So as you put that circle on the inside, now you can shade it in and he's got like a black eye. Now, not a black eye like a bruise, but like a black eye. Like the, the pupil, the, eye the, pupil is black. And the iris and the eyelids, they all make you know, there's one black circle. And these are cartoons, so they're like kind of overgeneralized, oversimplified, and that's okay. It makes them fun to draw. Now, the side, the other eye is a little bit trickier. It's got to be round, but it's, it's rounded seen from the side. So if you almost imagine drawing the oval that you did for the nose, almost turn the oval, and then you're going to get the, um, the eye. Um, it's just going to be taller than it is wide. And inside of there, you're gonna get the highlight and it's the same thing. It's just taller than it is wide, it's an oval. And that's how you make circles seen from the side. I, I talk about this all the time. If you have, look at my coffee cup, look at my coffee cup from this, uh, that's not right. I'll show you this one. So this is my, um, my glass, my cup. So like, this is my coffee thing. When you look at it from up above, it's a perfect circle. When I turn it, and show it from almost the side. See how it becomes um, like an oval? If I turn it this way, 
that's the eye on the left side. And then this is the eye that's facing us. That was actually a pretty good example. So that's the eye that's facing us. And then this is the eye on the side of the head as I turn it, turn it right about there. Nice. Um, okay, that's good. Let's give this guy a, um, it looks like he has a horn. I mean, I think it looks like a birthday hat. <laughs> So I think about it like a birthday hat, but it might be actually a, like a horn, like a growth horn. Um, we're going to have a rounded bottom. and this It sits, is a horn. It is a horn. Okay. So it sits on the top of his head. So you don't want to like add a triangle just like stuck to the side. You want to show that the horn is coming out of the middle of the head and it's, you know, his head, we're above looking down. So of course it is a triangle. It's just, it's going to overlap the, the outside of his head. So it comes in a little bit. So you're going to have to probably erase a line, the back edge of the head. And one of the things you'll know, especially when you study with me, is that, you know, the erasing is just part of drawing. It's not a, um, it's not like you made a mistake. It's just, you had to start with a circle. You have to get the complete circle. And then when you don't need the complete circle anymore, then you can erase it and fix it. Um, I used to not erase at all. Um, just because I felt like I used it as a bad habit. Like, I'd be like, oh, that's not right. I have to fix it. Oh, that's not right. Even if it was, even if it was okay, I overused the eraser. And that can be kind of a problem too. So use the eraser. The eraser is your friend. Don't make it work against you. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. We've got seven little pieces of the um, weedle and then the tail. And the, this is like, the, this is, in my opinion, like the fun part. And it, they, just like the head is big and the tail, the end is the smallest, it goes from big to small in little increments, like little small stages. So watch this. If I go one shape, this first shape has got to be smaller than the head. And then the one after it has to be smaller than that one. And it, if you make it too small, then, you know, it might look like he's getting too small too fast. But as long as you start with one size and just keep getting smaller and smaller, it should work. And it should look great. It should look like it's going back into space. And they're, they're like, you know, they overlap each other. One, two, three, four, five six and i might be going too small too fast too six and then i did seven but i mean it's wow if you look at it it really does go very dark i mean not very dark it really does go very small i i, I just it's tried to like i just tried to like draw another circle yeah. and then i drew it a little too big and then it formed the tail which is pretty cool. um yeah that works yeah just go with it let's see it Wow, that's good stuff. That's really nice. Um, all right, so each one of these component parts, let's just put the tail on there. There's this little, I think it looks like a flame. You know, if you imagine like you have a candle over here and there's like, I like to draw flames like this, like almost like upside down teardrops. Nice, there's Pikachu. So I'm gonna do this flame shape, but really it could be a stinger. It might be a stinger, like it might be actually a, uh, does anybody know if that's a stinger, like a, like a bee, like a bee sting? Um, each one of the legs, I'm really glad that we did uh, some of the, the 3D things, but each one of the legs, you can see the right leg, you know, the right side leg, each one of the body parts has a leg on it. And then this side, the left side, you only get to see four before they overlap each other. So let's try doing it like that. So we'll do one leg and the legs are just circles. Two legs, three legs, four legs, five legs, six legs, seven legs. And they get smaller, but they don't get as small. That's interesting that that happened. I guess the legs do have to get a little bit smaller as they go back. I don't know if you guys, if anybody has a, um, a photocopier 
if you're if your parents have a photocopier or maybe at work or something um you can photocopy these and color them in a lot easier like if you start with pencil um it's nicer to i i can copy off the color from a pokemon card because i have it perfect so we got the right side leg let's do the left side leg right side leg left side leg Right side, left side, right side, left side. And then I'll add one more. It's a little different than his, but. <clears throat> so yeah, is this a, a do you, I don't think you know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a boy or girl. <laughs> to me, it looks sort of like a boy. Yeah, who knows, yeah, I guess. Okay, I do a girl version. Can we see? With hair. <laughs> Can I see? Yes, this is not a regular Pokemon. I just do it. That's a great one. I love these iterations. These are awesome. Nice, Lasia. Thanks. Oh, wait, yeah, you weren't talking to me. No, I wasn't. No, I was talking to you. I was just, I was looking at a bunch of them. Oh. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm gonna add a couple little details on here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll move on to Evie. Evie's a little bit hard, I have to admit. I don't know. I kind of wanted to do outer space today, though. Um. I don't know if you can notice this, but a little bit, um, there's a little bit of tone on each one of the feet. It's like a light. So because I don't have color, I'm just gonna maybe shade in those feet to make them look a little different than the rest of it. And I just noticed that the same color of the nose is the same color as the, um, feet so I don't have colors like I said but I can I can shade it in the same way and then it'll look similar I don't think I'm going to shade the uh, I don't think I'm going to shade the body or the head it looks a little bit like a clown right now though I don't wonder why mine too you think it's because the nose is so big like yeah clown, I think clowns sometimes have clown noses and I think it may and they might even be like like horizontal like that I'm not sure usually they're spherical and they're definitely spherical I know why it's because you shaded it in a dark color but um, in the picture it's shaded in light yeah I think you're right about that too it really stands out the color. Dark color. So sometimes if you want to make something look um, lighter, it's not that you add any light to it. It's like you actually darken what's around it. So this is, I think I can make it, it looks good. I was trying to, I, I didn't want to shade the head because I knew if I shaded the head, I'd have to shade the body, but that might not be the case. I think I might be able to get away with just doing the head. There's my blender. Most of the time pencil blends really nicely. Okay. One more minute on this. And then maybe can we have a can I have a see can I look and see how everybody's drawing is going? Did you guys get the overlapping um, sections? Yeah, that looks good. I just I think I like want to shade in mine. Mm -hmm. Pikachu. Those are nice eyes. And the Pikachu is great. I feel like you've drawn that before. Have nope. you drawn that Pikachu? I've never right. drawn Pikachu ever before. Never. It's never. your first go. Wow. All right. I feel like we're ready. I feel like we're ready for the, uh, for Evie. Let's try her. 
I've never drawn this one before. Um, the one I'm thing excited. I the one thing I noticed about this one is that the ears are all are kind of rabbit ears, um, and I'll explain to you what I mean um, in a second. So I guess somebody was telling me that she does live in like the grasslands, and that oh makes God. sense because her ears do stick up like that, and in the same way rabbits do. Like rabbits, their ears are like periscopes for sound waves so like they stay in the tall grass and they stick their ears up they're camouflaged and then they can hear you know things from far away so yeah let's maybe um we can do you know the whole figure but i'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see um her face and it's so cute <clears throat> it's a really cute uh character yeah like i said i'm not i don't really know pokemon all that well but i do know a cute character when i see one and this is and they're really well done. They're really well drawn. I sketched her before. Um, okay, so the one thing let, let's let's start this up. Don't don't have any fear. Um, we'll go step by step. And the nice thing about it is that um, the eyes and the mouth are really small. So as long as we get the shape of the head and the eyes um, and those like rabbit ears, we're going to be in really good shape. Um, so this is the one thing that I wanted to, to mention. This is the strategy that I used last time. Remember when we Chris made is dead. Do you remember when we made the sandwich and I said that the sandwich was a square, but then it had rounded edges? Yeah. Um, her face is kind of like that. And if you look at the top of her hair from ear to ear, you know, it's kind of, a, it, it curves, yes, but you can see that she's got some bangs and some hair. Then you can see from her ear down to her cheek, that's the side of her head here. Yes, it's curved, but one side, two sides, and then you go from her one cheek all the way down to the other cheek. Yes, it's curved, but it's the very bottom and you have the side here. So if you guys um, can just believe me for one second, I'm gonna draw the curved top, the curved side, and then the curved bottom. And then the other curved side. I'm trying to leave enough room for her um, for her hair. So imagine whether you're, it doesn't matter whether you're drawing the piece of bread, which is a square, or Evie's head, which is also a square. Make sure, you know, sketch it um, lightly and make sure it's curved, but you want to make sure you know where there's four sides. Um, and to make that obvious right now, um, let's just add these little triangles for her bangs. And then that, and then the next thing we're the next thing we're gonna do, I promise, is the eyes. How do you curve it again? Um, so I'll do it up here. So if say you have a square which is hard hard edged, you can do a four sided, almost like a puffy, like a puffy square. So it's one, two, three, four sides, but it's really curvy, you know, swelling outwards. Does that so make sense? It's like, so it's like a square, but it's short. It's like a square. It's like if you were to add a square and a circle together, because like a circle goes like perfectly round and then a square has four sides. And then if you were to like add them together, you'd get something that was almost a circle, but it still had four sides. Does that make sense? It's, 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 so it's, we it's just have a turn. the it's sides good. of it. Shocking. Yeah. Let's just, let, let's try. We'll we'll come back and refix it later. Let's see if we can get these eyes in here. Now, the one thing I found out about Evie is that she does have um, ovals for her eyes, and unlike other creatures, you know, unlike humans in particular, her eyes are really wide set. They're, her eyes are kind of wide set, almost the way a dog's eyes are wide set. So rabbits' eyes are on either side of their head, so they can see all one side, all the other. Dogs, their, ear, their eyes are still in the front. They are predators, but then they're a little bit wider. And then humans' eyes are really close together. There's only one eye width in between each tear duct. <clears throat> I just moved that up. I just moved that up for a second. Um, okay, so um, remember we talked about the, the weevil's eye? Um, the weevil had one highlight and then the whole rest of it was black. Um, 
what this one has is a little bit more complicated. You want to add the highlight at the top, which is an oval, just like the weevil. Um, but then underneath that, you have what's called the pupil, which is an actual hole. So you want to put the pupil in the middle of that oval underneath the highlight. And now she looks like uh, she looks like a little startled at the moment. But if you shade the sides, the upper portion of the sides, it almost creates like this illusion of a, um, a shadow from an eye from eyelashes. She doesn't have any eyelashes. But and she does have a relatively dark rim around her eye. So instead of the eye being two parts, just black and a highlight, it's got three parts. It's got a highlight and it's got a pupil, which is in the middle. Um, and the part that's left over in, in this one is the purple part and that's the iris. And sometimes people make irises with, um, you know, these like, like these kind of these straight lines that come out. So we've got eyes, we've got the bangs. Um, you can put these little eyebrows in. One of the things that makes uh, Evie, Evie are her little angled eyebrows. They're like kind of in the middle, a little curvy. And then her nose is, 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 in, the, is in between the eyes. And the, like it's so, and you're so small. Her you're nose and her mouth are so angry. small. I just drew the teeniest little lips in there. She, the, the the eyebrows, because they're angled like that, they do make her look a little, um, a little angry. Not totally angry, but a little bit angry. Because I don't, I, when I look at her, I'm not like, that's an angry animal. But then when you focus on the eyebrows, you're like, huh, I question that. Wow, cool. Great start, great start. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll polish up the side of the head um, here in a second. Let's get the, um, let's do the ear on the left right here, and then we'll do the ear on the right. So we remember we had that corner, we had those four corners of the head. We're going to start in the top left hand corner, and we're going to build out the first section, which is our first kind of triangle. And it's the base. This, this triangle is the base of the ear. And then we're gonna take a second triangle and add it. It's almost like combining two triangles together. The way I taught this to my, uh, to my, my, my um, kids the other day is you almost wanna think about the ear as a, um, like a picture frame. You know, so you have the picture that's in the middle and then it's got the frame around the outside. The triangles that we just drew is the outside and then we have to draw the frame. So we're gonna come in a little bit and give the ears a, like a rim. So there's the outside of the ear, which is, the, which is light. And then there's the inside of the ear, which is dark. Um, it looks like there's like two little hairs. Uh -huh. Hair. Do you guys know that they, they, some people call rabbits hairs? Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Like the tortoise and the hare? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, they look like rabbit ears. So I was like, there's two little hairs here. That's part. such a funny joke. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got the inside of the ear, which is dark. And I think we might as well just shade that in now. And then we're going to have the outside, which is um, whatever the tone of EB winds up being. Um, if you think about it, two triangles together almost create, I guess, a diamond shape. So Evie's ears are long, stretched out diamonds, which I had not thought of before. So whenever I draw stuff, I, I and I teach it, I get new, I, I learn new things every single time. And that's the fun of drawing, is that even though, even though how frustrating this it like might be, because it's like hard, it might not look right, learning you'll you'll learn things new things every single time you draw and it makes it really worth it 
Some people blend with their finger. I'm blending with a, uh, a little piece of model magic. All right. Um, so just really quickly, before we start this other ear, we might as well get some like really good free answers. So we have the bangs up here, which are look good. Let's like reiterate the, uh, how's it going, man? Let's reiterate the side of the, um, of the face. So we're gonna do the curved side. And yes, we have, um, you know, we have the square kind of right now, but we're gonna try and get curves. So we're gonna come up this end, we get the curved left side and then the curved bottom. She's kind of got like a, like a big jaw and then it comes up into these cheeks. And it's really what's part of what makes her um, such a nice character. I think it's like the, the angle of the smile and the curve of her chin. And then we'll come up this side as well. Should we put the flowers in? I think we should put the flowers in. All right, so we should got we got to do the first flower, and then that'll overlap the second flower, and overlap the third flower. I'm gonna draw it real big here. So you draw the center of the circle, and then we'll do one petal, two petals, three petals, four petals, five petals. That seems good. And then we'll do the middle of the other one, and then we'll go one, two, three, four, and we'll do the middle of the third one and then we'll build the petals around that. That's, that's gonna be the ticket is drawing the center and then building the circles around it. And I might have to erase one of these bangs too. Um, is it okay if I just throw in my- um, Make your own flower. Shaving? Always, always, always. If you have a better way of doing something, please, please, please. The one thing, the thing I'm, I'm really trying to teach is artistic independence. So we do these, we do these drawings because they're fun and inspiring and I can teach you ideas. But if you know how to make a flower or you want to make a flower, or if you like, if you want to draw a whole nother Pokemon, like this is your time to make art. I want to help you do that. And the, um, I don't know, I just don't know. I can't, I can't say that enough. I mean, this is your time to make your own art. And if I can make your art better, that's why I'm here. So I got the yellow center, I got the blue outside, I got the yellow center. Now I've got the red petals on the outside, which are huge compared to the blue. I had, I mean, I, I noticed that the scale was different, but it's almost like there's a, a really small blue one, a kind of small white one, and then a huge red one. And if you get the hang of these flowers, you might put flowers all over the place, you know? Like, look, she, like the artist looks like she got excited and added you know, three on the tail as well. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. This is where this x-ray vision comes into play. Um, we, know that the we know that the ear attaches to the side of the head because we just drew it on this side. So the head kind of comes in front and we have to do one triangle, which is the base of the bottom half of the diamond. Then we'll do a second triangle, which is gonna be the top half of the diamond. So the bottom half of the diamond only sticks out, oof, like, a little bit above the flowers. You see that? We don't even see where the diamond attaches to the head because the flowers are in the way. Now we'll angle up and we will get the top of the diamond. So we have two triangles stacked one on the other to get the um, diamonds. And then we'll do the same things we did before. We're gonna draw the, the dark uh, center and we're gonna let the light for be the frame. So I'm gonna add some pigment to get the dark center, the diamond, I can blend it out. And then I can erase some of the lines. So it, like two triangles, like I have over here, two triangles equal a diamond, but then you can erase the middle triangle. And then all you have is a diamond. Because he's got these, she's got bangs here. Bangs coming from the flower a little bit. Yes, I did it. I had four. 
It's okay. All right, I have to zoom out a little bit, y'all, because the next most important characteristic of this particular character is, um, is the mane. And it's a really beautiful mane. It's somewhere, I, I had a friend who has alpacas and I guess this is the time of year that you shave the alpacas and then you take their, you take their fur and you make them into all kinds of beautiful um, wool. Looks good. Look at those ears. Oh man, I love it. I love good. those ears. This is good. Yeah, it is good. What I would do, the only thing I would improve is um, you have the, the top of the head like really dark right here. It's like a flat top. Um, I would just erase that and replace it with um, replace it with like the these curving triangles. And then the other thing that you want to do, and I for, I should have said it in the beginning, and I, I I actually made the mistake myself. You want the ears to be about the same size. And I don't know if you can see but my the flowers are in the way of mine. Yeah, totally. But if you look at mine, look how big this ear is compared to that ear. Mm -hmm. Now in the picture. This ear is bigger than that ear. I get it. I get that. But it's, I think my ear is a little bit bigger than it should be. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a, I wonder if I can erase it slightly. This is an example where I'm actually using the eraser to make a correction because it was too much for me. Sometimes, sometimes if it's a little bit off, you got to go with it. And other times, if it's just too much, you can actually erase. Like that. It's a little bit better. Much better. Much, 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 much better. Okay. Let's do this main. I think if we, once we do the main, and I think we'll, if anybody else has it in them to do the paws and the feet and the, the tail in the background, it's like the tail is kind of like a foxtail. So the artist is using like slightly different um, like animal parts sort of. Um, but uh, we, the um, Evie, what I've been able to find looking at a couple different references is that the main is done in three parts. And I think my, my picture is zoomed out as much as it can. Let's slide this down. Straighten that, straighten this. Straighten that up. Okay, so there's like a part that comes from the neck, like from the, the center, and then it almost wraps around like a collar, but there's three parts. So I'll show you the first part is this middle. And it's almost like, I don't know what kind of um, shape this is. What does that remind you of? Almost like a heart. You see the heart in there? Without the, without the pointed center? It like swells out and it comes to the middle, swells out, comes to the middle. Um, and then just like the bangs, um, the way the tips of the main end are in these little kind of beautiful points. Then we want to imagine that this, um, it's almost like a scarf that goes like all the way around, but you don't see it attach in the back. And we have to look and see if whether it does attach in the back from other pictures, but definitely um, you have the side of it, of this main comes off the side here and also comes off the side here. So lovely. Um, the same shape that the mane um, makes, notice that it shows up in the tail as well. It's a huge flame, almost like the S curve of the weasel, or the weedle. And I wonder if these artists, you know, intentionally repeat some of these ideas. All right, so I added some flowers. I worked the flowers into my composition, the, even the test ones I put on this side. And then I'm gonna add a couple more test, you know, a couple more down here. The, the center, one circle, two circle petal, three circle petal, four circle petal, five circle petal. That seems to be the whatever type of flower she's living with in this particular field. They have, a, they all have a center and they all have these circular petals that add up to five. You know, when they're not overlapped. 
<clears throat> um, if I zoom in back in the face a little bit, I was looking at my I was looking at my uh, Evie, and I'm like, my chin looks really big. And then I looked at hers, the the artists, and the way she drew it is that there's a little bit of shadow underneath the uh, side of the head and the chin. <clears throat> so in the next couple of seconds, I was just I was just analyzing my piece, and I'm like, why does it look too big? And I think it looks too big because um, it needs a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just going to add a little shadow and smooth out some of that line. And I actually might make her face look a little smaller, you know, by next, shaving the side. Next, next, can we do like um, Umrion? That's another thing of Evie. Like it's an um, how do you spell it? U M B R E O N. Is it easier or harder than this one? And how do you spell um, it? It doesn't, it doesn't have like a long mane and it doesn't have that long of a tail. So I bet it's a little easier mm -hmm. and, it's, and, it's, and it's mostly black. So it's a little easier. Okay. Um, I'll look it up for next week and hopefully Stacy gets to make it. Um, let's see. I feel like that's pretty good. Is there any other shading things? Can we, we've got one more minute left. Let's, can I see some of the drawings? I'm going to stop the, sh the, stop the share. Just so I can get a sense when I, when I'm in class in person, it's so easy for me to be able to see what kids are doing um, at their desks. And okay, yeah, these look great. All right, let me pin some people here. Um, okay, Lassie, I'm pinning you. Hold on, guys, just keep holding it up. Be patient. That's a great page. That's a great page. Yes. Okay, Lassie, thank you. All right, Zoya, I'm gonna pin you now. Good work. Wow, look at those eyes. Very sensitive. Good job. Yeah, that tail really makes it, doesn't it? Yeah. Really makes it. And those eyes are, are very, very touching. Um, okay, so let's, Melissa, let's check out uh, the place pin. Great, those flowers are fantastic. You really recovered on the side of the head. That looks really good. Um, you may add an extra border to the ear that's on the, on the, the right side, I think. You know how one ear has a border and the other ear doesn't have a border? If you add a border, then they'll be the same size and it'll be perfect. All right, let's see, Mr. Haber, let's see what you got. Let me replace that pin. Oh, you built a whole environment. I can't believe that's the first time you drew him. It's so good, it's so good. Um, I like that house. Is that, is that a sun or an eclipse? Looks like an eclipse. Very powerful. Um, okay, Patrick, can I see yours, bud? Replacing the pin. I actually didn't. Wait, I, are you muted? No, I'm not. I actually didn't really see the rest of it, so I just. Yeah, but look at that weevil. It's great. And I'm glad you used color. And that the tip, the, the tail did fix itself. Okay, that's awesome. Great work, great work. Um, yeah, I will look up that Umbrian. Umbrian. Hey guys. Um, but my other class just walked in. Hopefully that was fun. I will see you all next week. And I think we'll do one more Pokemon, but I think we've got to go into outer space. Wait. Did you have wait. a question, Melissa? Yeah, um, we didn't what? finish Evie. Uh, that is true, but we ran out of time and I've got this other class. Do you want, should we finish the feet next week? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll finish the feet next week. All right, don't work on it then. We'll, we'll, we'll finish. And then even if somebody else um, wasn't here this week, they can just catch up. Um, all right, I really got to go. Great to see you all. We'll see you next week. Okay, bye. bye.